Thank you, everyone, for joining us for the OKD Working Group meeting for July 20th of the year 2021. And I will pop the agenda uh, into the uh, chat for folks that don't have it. Um, and there we are. So let's do a quick uh, agenda review real quick before we get started. Does anyone have anything that they want to add? Is there anything missing? Or anything that you'd like to change? No? All right. Sounds like folks are good with what we have. So let's start out with introductions. I always like to do this because, you know, there's always going to be new people watching these videos that are getting put up on, on YouTube. Uh, so we'll start out. I'll just go across my screen. Uh, Brian, go ahead. Oh, okay. Hey, I'm Brian Innes. Um, I work for IBM, but I'm here as a hobbyist. I run OKD on Overt and got a home lab set up. All right, uh, Mike Rochford. How's it going? Go ahead and uh, introduce yourself for the folks that might be. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> I was like in the middle of doing other things. Um, <laughs> hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Mike. I am new to Red Hat as a junior solutions architect, off in the, the Northeast, Northeast Comm sales division, um, part of the Acquire Pod. Been hanging around the OKD working group for starting really around like, I don't know, like March last year. I'm um, just kind of been a more of a lurker, just watching what's going on. Um, but I would like to take part in some of the container stick stuff moving down the line if I have the time to do so. Excellent. Philip. Uh, hi, I'm Philip. Um, I'm working for A4M. And currently I'm regretting the OKD stuff from uh, 3.11 uh, to uh, 4.7. So I have some problems, but uh, yeah. I hope yeah, they excellent. will be solved soon. Thank you for joining us. And uh, Driti. Hey, everyone. Um, so this is the first time that I'm joining this uh, OKD meeting. Um, I'm from Red Hat, and I'm looking to contribute to OKD. Yeah, that's all. Thanks for joining us. Neil. Hey, y'all. Name's Neil. Uh, I work at Datto as a senior DevOps engineer, but I'm here uh, representing the Fedora community to uh, help make sure that uh, OKD and, uh, and the OpenShift teams are able to uh, communicate effectively with Fedora teams and get the good stuff in there basically easily and quickly. Uh, and I'm also here kind of as a hobbyist to, to, to like have uh, OKD working for the hobbyist type folks because uh, that, that matters quite a lot to me. One. Mike El Mico. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, Mike McCune. Uh, I'm an engineer at Red Hat, where I mainly work on uh, OpenShift uh, cloud platform or container platform and uh, cloud infrastructure team. Uh, I just love OKD. I think it's a great uh, you know community and whatnot. So yeah, just here helping out. Excellent, Bruce. Yeah, hi there. Uh, I'm Bruce. Uh, I'm an instructor at uh, BCIT, which is a technical school up uh, north of the U.S. border in a frozen land called Canada. And uh, you know, so we're sort of on on break. So I've been distracted with a whole bunch of other stuff for, so far over the summer. But uh, I'm gonna have to get uh, my network up and running with uh, hopefully 4.8 going into the fall if that happens. Excellent. Christian. You're muted, my friend. No, nope, he's still, running from the 4.8. <laughs> Try now. No, I'm seeing the icon go on and off. That's weird. Does it work now? Can you hear me? There we go. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's audio. 
Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Christian Glomick. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. Um, I've also been co-leading the OKD Working Group, although I've stepped back a little bit to focus on, on more internal work at the moment, um, which will circle back to OKD. I'm currently working on the ARM enablement um, effort. And yeah, so hello, everybody. Excellent. Welcome. And we have uh, Chuba, whoever that may be. You're on mute if you're speaking. Okay, well, we'll move on and, until uh, if you decide you want to say hi. Uh, Timothy. Hey, hi. So I'm, I'm Timothy Ravier. And I work uh, in the Chorus team at Red Hat, so essentially do a lot of the work around Fedora Chorus, which is the basis for uh, the OS at the base of OKD. Mohamed Reza. Hi, guys. Sorry, tonight I changed my laptop and don't have webcam, so you don't have my screen. Uh, uh, I am actually a newbie in the cloud community. Uh, it's about a month or two. I work. I'm coming to these meetings, and uh, this week I am a bachelor of bachelor of science in electrical engineering. I finally finished my bachelor, and happy to be here. Excellent. Congratulations, Amy. Thanks. Gotta find my button. Hi, I'm Amy Marish. I'm a principal technical marketing manager at Red Hat, specializing in OpenStack, but I'm very big in open source communities and helping to manage them, and that's why I'm here to help out. Thank you for joining us. Shri. Hi, everybody. I'm Shri. Uh, I work with Neil at Datto, and uh... You know, we we use uh, you know Kubernetes and Red Hat at work, but uh, and OpenShift and everything. But I'm here, uh, I think, along with several people, as, as as part of the sort of hobbyist sort of home lab uh, community, trying to get OKD more traction in that space. Excellent, and Fabian. Uh, hey there, uh, I'm also an engineer uh, at Red Hat, um, working on the Operator SDK team. Um, and so I like to kind of watch these meetings from that perspective. And then I'm also uh, a hobbyist in the home lab space, uh, still running OpenShift 3 in my home cluster, but uh, definitely excited to upgrade to OpenShift 4. So following these discussions for that purpose as well. Excellent. And uh, Brian, did you go yet? I don't think you did. Uh, I started. Oh, that's right. You started. So we've already made it all the way around. Yeah. All right, excellent. Oh, and I'm Jamie McGarra um, with the University of Michigan, co-chair of the working group. And uh, at University of Michigan, we're using OKD uh, for uh, uh, in a variety of places within the university. The one that I'm particularly involved in at the moment is with uh, uh, a consortium called ICPSR of many different universities and organizations doing social science research. So a lot of data uh, and number and uh, survey crunching and whatnot. Uh, let's jump now to the next item on our agenda. And that is the release updates with Christian. What do you have for us? So there's two things um, I think that are uh, noteworthy. We have been, or Vadim has been looking um, uh, at preparing uh, OKD 4.8 and 4.9 nightlies. So that is uh, probably a soon to land if, if, if it hasn't already. Um, and then uh, very, very uh, importantly, I think um, we have finally uh, merged the, the FCOS and master branches of the installer. So the installer for OKD can now be built off of mainline, which I think um, yeah, this has been a long time in the making, and this is a great milestone for us. Um, unfortunately, um, the MCO, which we had merged uh, at some point, now um, 
is still a fork again, but uh, that's only I think five commits, and we we're definitely um, working on on getting that merged back in again as well. Uh, but yeah, g getting closer and closer. So that I think um, yeah, that, that's a really uh, big important milestone for us internally as well uh, for uh, just um, making OKD one important part of the main uh, branch. So that is uh, in the installer that has happened now, finally. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, Vadim um, had sent me some things. Yeah, uh, OKD 4.8 and 4.9 nightly preparation. Now, I don't think there's anything anything else um, right now. OK, thank you for that update. And uh, thank you, Christian and Vadim and all of the people that have been doing the work uh, to, to get uh, the installer uh, in the position that it's in and to get OKD uh, in the position that it's in right now. Very much appreciate all of that. And by the way, Christian uh, pointed out, uh, and actually it was Vadim, I think, that pointed out um, that it was just a year ago that OKD uh, v4 was released. So it's, it's just over a year that, that uh, OKD has been a thing in, for version 4. And uh, I think a lot of things shifted at that time, uh, and a lot of great things have come of it. Uh, so now let's go into. I, actually, let me um, let me jump right uh, here and uh, jump in here. And one more thing uh, that I think is kind of it, it's not strictly related to OKD yet, uh, but it's definitely release related. So um, for OpenShift, we have just released a developer preview for ARM 64 for the ARM64 architecture, which uh, you can download. Uh, I think you'll need the uh, the developer subscription for that. Um, but there is a blog post about uh, about that. I've, I've linked it here. I'll put it in the in the notes as well. Um, so if you want to try out OpenShift uh, on ARM, you can do that right now. We will hopefully soon um, also get OKD on ARM. Um, uh, Timothy might be uh, having some updates there with regards to, to the Fedora Core OS AMI uh, that is still missing to, to run uh, the AR64 image on AWS. Um, but yeah, that is definitely uh, on the horizon for us as well, so we're working on that. And if you can't wait, then you can uh, already install OpenGL as a dev preview there. Excellent. Very, very cool. All right, let's move now to uh, the um, uh, uh, FCOS uh, updates. So go ahead and take it away, Timothy. Sure, thanks. All right, so as I've been mentioned, I'll talk about uh, ARM64 support uh, first. And uh, the work is still in progress. I think Dusty posted um, an one AMI that you can use for testing, um, but it's probably an, available only on one region, if I remember correctly. So it's definitely a test AMI that will go away at some point. So don't rely on that for anything serious. I cannot find the link uh, for now for this one, but this should be somewhere in the Fedora Chorus tracker. Um, and yeah, so ARM64 support is coming along and should be available at some point. Um, then, after that, um, I don't have anything specific new. Just want to uh, point again two things from last uh, meeting. Uh, the first one, we're still looking at Fedora certified changes um, as they come along. So this is like a continuing, a continuous process. Make sure we don't miss anything. Um, we're still having discussions around how we should and uh, couldn't manage tools on Fedora Cores, so this does not exactly directly impact OKD because you ship with your defaults pre-built in. So, but well, maybe some inputs. Uh, if you have any inputs on that, uh, it's still welcome of on the Fedora Cores side. Uh, and finally, we had last. In last meeting, we had a platform support discussion. Uh, so 
we run out of time. So if we still have any questions around platform support for Fedora CoreOS, then feel free to read them today so that we could discuss that. Uh, the summary is still in the in the HackMD uh, for which platform is supported for Fedora CoreOS, but if anything, uh, if any other questions uh, are raised, feel free to ask. Is there anything? Does anyone have any questions right now for Timothy? Go ahead. Yeah, is there anything we can do to help out with that? Um, you guys are targeting AWS. Is there is there going to be a parallel effort, home lab hat on for like Raspberry Pis or similar uh, at the same time or from that there? Or anything that so, is like affordable bare metal type stuff. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be Raspberry Pis, but like something that is sub sub two hundred dollars per unit to set up an ARM based cluster. So right now, I think the biggest challenge there is uh, is the the memory that's available on those devices. We we can't install OKD or run OKD with eight gig, gigabytes and even sixteen uh, is probably not enough. So until there are uh, devices with thirty two gigabytes available, um, we it it won't be easy to do that to to say the least. Might not even be possible at all. So but once we have um, those uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM uh, available, that should really be, it should be doable then. Yeah, and if, if you can, um, I don't know, uh, solder your own uh, memory onto a Raspberry Pi 4, um, then you might be able to do it earlier. But yeah. yeah that would uh, be a really cool blog post. Someone talk to Gearling, I'm sure he's done it. <laughs> So, so yeah, like, can we back then, up for a second? Uh, let me, for people that might be watching this that aren't familiar with the excitement around ARM and why the excitement, let's actually provide a little, little bit of context in terms of why ARM as an architecture is so exciting uh, to run clusters or run anything on. Um, so in short, right, better efficiency, fraction of the power um, utilized for the power that for processing power that you get out of it. If someone wants to be more specific, go ahead and jump in there. I, feel like I think yeah, that that is the biggest factor here. Um, just cost saving and um, also more energy efficient. Um, and also more availability up. of hardware at the lower end. It's right. way easier yeah. to find a $30 ARM board than it is to find a $30 x86 board. Right, so obviously OpenShift will, um, or OKD, but then also will only run on SBSA uh, certified hardware or compatible hardware, which is uh, the, the ARM server ready uh, certification, um, which means in order to, to install um, Fedora on it, Fedora CoreOS, and for OpenShift, uh, RHEL CoreOS, you will have uh, you will have to have um, that compatibility, which essentially means that the the devices are UEFI capable or ACPI capable um, of booting um, in a UEFI image without having to go through the device tree uh, boot process with uBoot. Um, so yeah. And, and and that is actually um, that is actually available for Raspberry Pi fours. Um, there is the uh, U, UEFI firmware for uh, RPIs, which is RPI four minus UEFI dot dev. I'll put it in the chat here as well. Um, with that firmware, um, you can essentially install uh, or run the the uh, OKD installer and use it that way. So um, the only problem there, as I mentioned, is that uh, Raspberry Pis don't have enough uh, RAM yet. But yeah, um, That's conceptually, really it, it should work. That, that is still super exciting. Just having ARM out there opens up a lot of possibilities. Excellent. Especially cool. like awesome. not even just for home lab stuff, but I'm thinking more like edge deployments and things like that as well. Really, really cool stuff. 
Something that I haven't heard mentioned uh, that I've seen in other places, though, too, is that like on the other end of the scale, there are there's a lot of work being done in the ARM server performance kind of sector. And I've seen predictions that in the next year or two, we're going to see a huge disruption on the server end from people running very high performance ARM devices. Um, you know, this is like on the back of the work that like Apple is doing and whatnot, where they're showing marked performance increases with the silicon they're building. So like, I don't know how true that is, but if if that's true in the next year or two years, we could start seeing a huge presence for ARM devices in the cloud as well, so. Yeah. Absolutely, I, I think that is uh, really the case. Right now there's only two or three devices that actually have this SBSA certification. And we're really only at the be at the very beginning of this. And, um, you know, the, the the more powerful uh, those devices become, the cheaper they become. Um, so maybe with the Raspberry Pi 5, uh, when it comes out next year, or if it comes out next year, maybe that'll uh, that'll already do the trick. And, um, you know, so uh, really, I think uh, there will definitely be much, much more, um, you know, many, many more hardware parts will be available. And um, right now, those are still really expensive, those servers, because, you know, these Ampere, Whatever they they are really expensive devices at the moment, but um, once this really gets into the the consumer market and is produced in in, in mass, um, prices will go down and this will become available uh, for the hobbyists uh, among us to to run their own open or OKD cluster on. Definitely, that's what I I strongly believe. Yeah, I'm not super tuned into the the ARM ecosystem from what I've the stuff that I've done. Um, but has anybody has anybody run any kind of like HVC type workloads with this machine learning or AI stuff on either like Graviton or Ampere stuff either on AWS or have they got stuff done locally at the university or something like that? Has anyone like even got a chance of, to use them? There are a couple of Japanese facilities, the university that have switched over to Ampere based um, ARM um, supercomputers for high performance computing. Um, both of them, I believe, run RHEL on them, but uh, it is um, the the catch twenty two for ARM is that there isn't good equipment for people to develop on. There's only good equipment for people to uh, to run stuff in production on, but all of that is too expensive for most people to use. Um, even with the with the Macs, right? Like the the problem with the ARM Macs is because you can't run Linux natively on them, and you can't do anything meaningful with that. Uh, uh, you know, with native workloads, there's a certain class of development that's just completely inaccessible to almost everybody. Um, unless there are companies or people like actively pushing for ARM-based equipment to exist at um, affordable price points that are actually powerful, you're just not going to see ARM move past where it is now. So, you know, maybe, you know, if if companies like IBM, Red Hat, Zunza are all like really wanting to have this ARM thing take off, maybe they should be talking to the people that make these SBCs and stuff to, you know, maybe tilt the roadmap a little bit more in, in, in favor of making, you know, high-end ARM development more accessible. Because right now it's it's just not. I feel like that's like, a I'm bit excited about to... ARM, but... Yeah, I'm I feel like it's a bit similar to PowerPC because all that is right now is there's Talos. Like that's all I'm aware of in the PowerPC space. For PowerPC space, yeah. there's nothing. There's no other vendor that does anything consumer level. Right. Like there's a couple of attempts to do something more affordable, but nobody's released to manufacturing anything other than Talos. And like when your lowest tier product in terms of pricing is two grand. For one machine, like that's out of the realm of possibility for almost everyone. Like, you know, I very much personally believe that it has been a huge mistake that that for ARM development, uh, for professional use cases, that everybody's been ignoring the fact that we don't have access to good ARM-based equipment on an individual level. And this is something that I know I've harped on a little bit in previous OKD meetings when we've talked about OKD on ARM, but like I really do feel that unless this problem is fixed long term, 
open shift on arm is going to not be a, as good of a success as it could be, um, to put it very mildly. Well, without, you know, obviously without breaking any of my contractual obligations to Red Hat, I can just say that, like, Neil, the kind of things you're, you're talking about, I have, like, seen those conversations happening inside the hat. Um, I, I can't say anything really, like, deeper about it. But I know that there are people who are more senior than me who are, like, concerned about these things, so. Yeah, I mean, it's it's even something as simple for me, like, uh, with this last Fedora, you know, I'm going to break a little bit out of the OpenShift bubble a little bit just, just for a brief moment. You know, this last release cycle for Fedora, for Fedora Linux 34, I launched um, Fedora KDE on ARC64. But it was such a pain in the butt to dev and test that. I had to do most of it blind and kind of hope somebody would tell me whether something was wrong because good, reliable ARM64 hardware just flat out doesn't exist. And uh, that is a serious problem that, you know, no amount of like promoting on the server end is going to fix. You've got to do something else on the developer end. All right, let's yeah. move on. We, we, I, 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 mean, I think that's... Uh, yeah, oh, I, I think Timothy, it, it, it okay, is hold on slow. one second. Timothy, then Christian. Yeah, we, we're not the uh, ARC64 development uh, working group. So, yeah, all of that we know, we cannot do anything about it. We work on, on the support of the platform that, that actually exists. And for Federal Chorus, uh, it will still be uh, SPUSA S and whatever and UFI. So, sure, lobby other, lobby vendors or whatever. But yeah, we cannot do anything about it. Okay, Christian. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can essentially second that. We can't really, we don't control the hardware space. We're here making the software. Um, and I mean, looking at, at the, the development over time, I, I do think there is a trend towards making that more accessible. You, you can now get these NVIDIA uh, Jetson uh, devices uh, for like $400, which, you know, they have 32 gigs of RAM. Maybe you can even run uh, OpenShift on them. Um, I don't think they have um, the, the UEFI firmware yet, but, um, you know, it, it is going in, in that direction. ARM devices are getting more powerful, and uh, at the same time, the prices are going down, um, and, and the proliferation is taking place, albeit slowly. Uh, but I do think in the future, obviously, it's not going to be tomorrow. It's probably going to be next year or in two years or even in three years. But by then, I think we will have um, the ability to really run an OpenShift cluster on hardware that doesn't cost much more or, or even less than a, than a thousand dollars, let's say. All right, I do want to move on uh, to the next topic. This was a great um, exploration though. I think it's really helpful in a variety of ways to, to give viewers uh, a sense also of what's happening and, and people in the meeting here as well of what's happening uh, in that space. So moving on, uh, our next uh, item is uh, a look at the issues. What are the issues? So looking at um, issues that are in the OKD repo, um, is there anything that stands out here that folks wanna bring to our attention? There's actually only been um, one added just in the past like two weeks and it was a uh, one about creating a, a new cluster 4.7 and looks like there was some conversation about it um john longo and this is more stuff with um network manager uh we're still sort of bouncing around network manager stuff and resolve um and does anyone have anything to add to that ticket i don't really have anything to add to it And I'll put the link in the chat for anyone that's not there yet. And uh, yeah, nothing really to add. So, okay, nothing uh, in particular in issues have popped up, that's good. Uh, now moving on to discussion items. Is there anything in the discussion items section? that's worthy of our attention. 
Um, the only thing added in the past uh, couple of weeks, actually, is just mirroring in the repository um, uh, and certificates. And I don't know if anyone has anything to add to that one. It's been sort of lurking for a while. Yeah, I, I think I commented on, on that. Um, I, I do think it's a user error um, that is really uh, tested and, and supported. Yeah, agreed. Okay, uh, moving on now to updates from the documentation group. Um, Mike, why don't you go ahead and cover the stuff that uh, that's uh, sort of in your court right now, or our court? Uh, maybe. Yeah, sure. I mean, I can talk about these these other things on the on the list. If you could, too, that'd, be kind of, that'd be great. Yeah, I can just repeat what happened in the meeting. So, um, linking to the charter from the main website page, I think we discussed that, and I th I thought Diane was going to look into doing that, but you know, I, well, we wanted to get the the whole groups. Uh, agreement on that was the, the gist. So bringing it to the whole group. Does anyone have any opposition to putting a link to the charter on the front page of the okd.io website? Is there any downside to putting a link to the charter? I think we should yes, probably, we should yes. probably, I was gonna say, I think we should probably like do this also through like a lazy consensus on the working group as well. Just to, if we're really gonna try and get like a community, you know, consensus about like putting this out there, you know. Yeah, let me get the link to the charter actually. Let's just do it. it. Uh, let's see. Where's yeah, I had, I had thought we were going to do it, but <laughs> well, yeah, I, I wanted to we run it by the it group. I'm just confused why we hadn't. Uh, Sounds where like is a good it? idea? I'm trying to find the link and it's not popping up. Um, uh, charter update. Okay, I don't see the link to it actually. Um, I'll find the link and put it in there. But yes, there is a charter. Christian can provide a little more context on that. But and maybe Neil, I think you were there at the beginning. Um, basically, it's like a page of explaining what the working group is about and um, people voicing interest and whatnot. So it doesn't sound like anyone. Okay, Neil uh, posted the uh, the link to it. So it doesn't sound like anyone has any downside. So we can say to the documentation group, go forth and Diane. Thereby go forth. All right, straw poll yep. vote. Raise your hands or say yay. 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 All right. Yay. All right. Just wanted to be well, sure. One thing I maybe would like to do is update the date that's at the top of it because uh, it has actually been updated. Uh, like it was updated three weeks ago, but the date wasn't changed. Maybe make that a V1.2 and update the date before we link it so everybody sees this is yeah. still current and not some some document from 2019. Okay, great. Let me uh, put that in the notes there to do. Um, is there anything else that stands out with folks that uh, that we should do to the document uh, before making it uh, uh, visible? Okay. All right, uh, sorry to interrupt you there. Uh, go ahead and take it away, finish up yeah, the no, documentation. Yeah, side. no worries. Um, so the inclusive language update, you know, like the the OKD, the docs.okd.io, that is all generated from the OCP upstream. So like we had, we had pretty positive feedback from the Red Hat docs lead who's kind of doing that work that They've run the inclusive language stuff on that, but then we also want to run it again, like some of the linting tools we have on the produce documentation and also on okd.io. So like okd.io itself has not had any sort of treatment. Um, it didn't look like it was in that bad a shape, but this is kind of something that, you know, I think is probably going to be coming. Um, so, that, but that's going on in the background, of, you know, I think it's being handled by the docs team pretty much. So um, I didn't have a I link to, Brian link. put in a, a ticket um, with a bunch of uh, notes. Do we want to cover that now or as a separate business item? I put it under new that, business. That, but... Yeah, Diane asked me just, just to, to mention it on, on, on the call. She pinged me yeah, just before. Yeah, let's do it. Meeting. Let's go ahead and do it now since we brought it up and I'll just move the link from the Okay, so I actually website. did run the tool on okd.io. Um, 
and I summarise the results in in this issue. Um, I think that the primary issue is um, the primary branch. Obviously, all new GitHub repos now get main as a primary branch. Um, existing ones still have the master. Um, so that is one of the problem words that gets flagged by the tool. So that has quite a lot of knock-ons to the repo. There's a lot of static links where the document links back to itself using the sort of direct links with the branch name in it. There are certain links like the contribution page where there's instructions on how to do things and that, that, that mentions the branch. And then I, I don't know how what the build pipeline is for the site, but I, I think there's some external tooling that would have to be updated. And then anybody with a clone, I think GitHub does a pretty good job of if you rename, it'll actually let sort of clones work for a while. But again, for completeness, you everyone who has a clone should run the, the commands in the issue um, just to update their, 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 their Git config. Um, a couple of other things um, that, that, that come out of it. Um, there is a couple of other words like whitelist that's in there that we obviously need to change. There, there are just some comments, but again, we should go in and change those. Um, other than that, it's, it's pretty clean. Um, so I, I did put an issue in because obviously there's quite a lot of coordination going to have to happen to actually move that over. Um, so I'm not sure how that's going to do. But I, I guess, are there any other repos that the, the OKD community owns that aren't sort of managed by a product team? I'm actually thinking of probably the main OKD. I, I know there is some, some content in that one. That probably also needs to be done. Um, the tool is very, very simple to run. Um, you can run it natively, or I actually just use the Docker. There's a Docker, Docker file in there. You just run the Docker file, um, and it pretty much works out the box. Um, so yeah, that's. We just need to then coordinate, get get these issues actioned. Excellent. Yeah. We also own the the community repository in the OpenShift org, which I don't think any automation touches. Uh, which is also the one that contains the charter. So we might want to rename the master branch to main there too. I don't think we can do that in all the OpenShift uh, component repositories yet because of the extensive automation and CI uh, that that requires um, that name, where where the master name is hard coded in various places. But in in that in those two in the community repository and in, in the OKD repository, I think it's possible. And my sense is my that at the next. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, Christian, my understanding on the com individual components was that like those were being left up to the teams uh, to migrate at some point. Yeah, I think what we'll end up doing at the next docs meeting next Tuesday is um, basically d developing a plan of getting all of the changes in, in the repos that we know and have control over as PRs, send out a message to the community in our various social media channels, letting them know about this change, and then approving the PRs um, after maybe a week or something like that, and sort of the our intent has seeped out into the community. And, and um, that's probably what the docs team is gonna do that's what um, I think we'll we'll talk more about it at the next docs meeting. Is there anyone here who's not attending the docs meeting that has any input or anything they'd like to add to this that we can bring back to the docs group? Um, or is there anyone who would like to join the docs group that hasn't been participating? All right, that's a, that's a clear mandate then for the docs group to do what they need to do. Um, and go do the thing. Go do the thing. And go, go do the thing. Yeah, Elmiko. Anything else uh, you wanted to say from Docs? Uh, yeah, the only last thing was like I sent out an email uh, earlier in the week about this guides uh, PR that I have up. I think you know the last week at the Docs meeting, you know Diane was like, "Let's merge this now." And like so, I think we're probably going to merge it next week. If people have comments, uh, please go check out that review. I, I got a few changes to make, but you know. Uh, definitely comments welcome.
I can, I'll put it in the notes for today too. Excellent, thank you. And thank you for all that hard work that you've put in, um, which involved understanding a, a very arcane system actually. Um, it more just offended my sensibilities than anything else. <laughs> From what I know of it, I totally understand that happening. Um, okay, and let's move on now to um, new business. And the new business that we have is to promote the recording of the open office hours. Um, a lot of people attended uh, it and forwarded it on social media, the link to it. Uh, when it happened or before it happened. Now we need to promote the recording of it. Um, so there's a link in the meeting uh, notes to that YouTube recording. So if you could share that widely uh, in your uh, networks, that would be awesome. And the next step in this operation is deciding on a date for the next one. So Diane isn't here, but basically she's offered up the the um, the Friday, or I think that they also have a Wednesday when they do the common stuff uh, for us to commandeer uh, those. And for context, the last one was the second Friday of the month. So it was July 9th at uh, noon. And my thought would be that we do the second Friday in August, which would be Friday the 13th at noon. Does anyone have any thoughts about that? Does that seem logical to try to do it once a month on the second Friday and just follow that cadence? Yeah, a lot of Open OpenShift TV does that. They have regular slots and I think people are used to that. I don't think it makes sense to actually say that the OKD team will be on second Friday of the month. Yeah. No, no objections. Okay, no one seems to have any objections to that. Um, if you do, I, I can't say whether whether Vadim and Diane uh, are able to make it at, on on that date. I won't be, unfortunately. I'll be uh, on on vacation. But yeah, if if they're there, I think that. Fine. See, whenever you say you're going to be on vacation, you have to tell us where you're going to be on vacation. Where are you going to be? I'm going to Italy. Awesome. Sicily, right. yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Um, okay, so even if Diane can't be there, I can be there. And can anyone else be there? Anyone else from the group? So that's not just me and, and whomever we try to rope in, whomever else we try to rope into it. So August 13th, noon, noon Eastern, I should say. So that's, um, what is it, uh, 5 p.m. Uh, UCT? I'll be on vacation too, so. Not as exciting as Italy, though. <laughs> Where will you be going? I'm going to Vegas to see George Strait in concert. <laughs> hey. It's a Texan thing. And there you go. Uh, yeah, just fair fair warning, Jamie. I I was just looking at the calendar. Friday that that August the thirteenth is is actually I think a holiday for most redhead employees. Oh, is it? Oh, it's it's, a, it's like day. an day. yeah, it's recharge day. We have these internal holidays, and that's you know that just happens to be it for the quarter. Okay, Friday the thirteenth. Okay, um. Yeah, right, who wants to give a demo on Friday the 13th of something? Uh, let's see. Well, let's, no. I guess we'll, oh, go ahead. No, no, I didn't want to interrupt you. Go ahead, Jamie. I was going to say, do we want to punt and just keep that date and hope that someone can join me? Uh, or should we do you, change it I to thought something you mentioned else? a Wednesday date as well? There was a slot? There, yeah, there is. Uh, it's the two days that OpenShift Commons has slots are, I think it's Wednesday at noon as well. Does anyone else know? I can check um, the calendar, but um, keep in mind that on that Friday, Chris and Bobby will be on recharge day as well, so they won't be able to produce. But let me check our oh. calendar, because that's oh, actually that's right, my team. Yeah. Okay. That was going to be my next question. <laughs> Thanks. Right, if no one's there to produce, right. <laughs> yeah, is Chris going to be there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
do we want to schedule another week then, or do we want to just skip and wait until September? I'd incline to say that it'd be easier to skip and wait until September. Yeah. But what, do we, cause... what would we want to talk about? Well, that was my next question. It's like, what what amazingly cool stuff is happening with OKD that we can demo or bring someone in to talk about? So maybe it makes more sen sense to... The, the to ARM stuff would be September. very fun to demo, like even in AWS or something, but that's probably better served waiting until September for a tiny bit of extra progress. If, Christian if we want to... If, if we want to do that on, on Fedora CoreOS instead of RHEL, um, then September might be better because I yeah. don't think we can, yeah. We're not ready right now. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> unless, you want to, unless you want to demo OpenShift, which uh, would be <laughs> no. lame. In, in the no, let's just hack it all <laughs> in together. <laughs> just build no, no. I mean, I'm good. I, I think a topic that a number of people have sort of expressed interest in is 4.8 single node cluster. I mm. think getting someone to demo that, especially for a lot of home users, that will be yeah, their go-to. So I think that would be really cool if somebody could actually demo that. <laughs> now, who oh. would we rope in to do that? Somebody that's got it working. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that those <laughs> profiles have made it to, to OKD. I don't know that anyone's even tried those profiles with OKD yet. Yeah. I thought about trying to rebuild OK with, with SNC, like the scripts they have in that repository, and then I, I didn't. <laughs> well, I tried, also, I tried, yeah, and so, well, no, uh, so no, SNC is, is one that. thing. Yeah, but SNO is actually another profile that's being like put together, oh. but I think 4.9 is, I think that's when it's going to be coming. I don't know, but single, like a single node open shift is something that's coming as like an edge case it's a yeah. little bit different yeah. than i think what we're talking about but that i don't think that profile has been tested at all with okd and I, i'm just not sure the sno stuff is kind of like a, a strip down from the operator standpoint like the most minimal needed my understanding of it R right i mean the, yeah this is right now it's being specifically targeted at edge um something i've thought about in the past is uh okd even though it's more of like a sibling thing with openshift Obviously, the OKD stuff kind of puts, feels like it's sometimes like a version ahead of like what's going on, even though like 4.8, and both like 4.8s kind of come out around the same time, but like 4.9 is like available in the CI stuff, even though there are nightlies from OCP. Um, would the working group like want to like try and shove like, hey, we're going to demo like 4.9 features for people so they can see what's coming in OpenShift, but also like you can use this now kind of thing, like for future releases at all, or do they not want like, do we want to like back off that and let Red Hat have their, their uh, promo for those kinds of things. I mean, that's a great question. I was I was thinking something similar because there's a feature that I'm working on for OCP right now that hasn't been tested with OKD yet. But like, it, I was going to recommend. I was going to say like maybe we should. This could be a possible demo idea as well. So like, I think it's total. Like all these many of the features we're working on are being developed in open source. So I don't see those any reason not to like do that i mean they'll they'll get released they'll get release announcements when you know ocp comes out but like my understanding at least from a red hat perspective is that okd is supposed to be kind of running out in front a little bit you know so like i think it'd be perfectly okay to you know to talk about these things like, like for example what i was going to propose that might be an interesting demo is you know we're getting ready to do this transition from the in-tree cloud providers to the out of tree cloud providers. And that's gonna open up a lot more kind of opportunity. Um, we have it working on OCP right now, but we could probably try it out with OKD and then demo like how people could do a migration from in tree to out of tree and also how they could install a cluster using out of tree cloud providers. So that, you know, that's a feature we're working on that we're gonna, you know, it's gonna be a big thing for OCP, but it could also be a big thing for OKD as well. And we could certainly demo it and, you know, talk about it if, if people are interested. Something like I've thought about in the past, some, there's a, like in the, the cloud space and the container space specifically, um, I've always wanted to investigate, because I never got the chance to use them, uh, is build packs. I know for eight, I think they GA'd that feature, but I don't think I've ever seen like any like written tutorial or video on using build packs within the OpenShift space, because it's always like S2I, use S2I for everything. But now you have this feature from CNCF that is GA in the product, but I don't see anyone talking about it. I feel like that'd be something cool to, that's just a personal thing. Um, 
but I had something that, else in my head. It just popped that, that may be something good to come from the community, though, because like a lot of the yeah. a lot of the internal talk I see is around using like S2I and using the Odo tool and whatnot to build these like you know source to image kind of things. So like I I haven't seen like a ton of people getting crazy about build pack, but like yeah, like that could be a great community integration to bring up, right? Well, I guess we do have oh, some ideas. Yeah, it sounds like we have some ideas. Do we want to, I mean, I guess if we decide in two weeks at the next meeting, that would still be enough time to promote and, and whatever, particularly if we're going to follow our regular cadence. Do we want to punt this topic until uh, next meeting in two weeks? Okay, let's do that, and then we'll make a final decision about what we're going to do. Because if we can get someone lined up, um, I think it would be good to have a regular cadence and not skip just because it, it builds that momentum and people know that you're always going to be there. Same bat time, same bat channel. But if we can't do it, you know, then, then we won't and do it. And it sounds like if our technical support, technical isn't, support there isn't there for the producers, then, then we're kind of dead in the water yeah. for, for next month on that particular day. But we'll see. It, it, it might actually be worth setting up, um, I don't know where we put it, but just, I mean, we captured quite a few ideas of what, what, what we can do just actually let's get a list together of what people think we should cover on those days so then we can actually start asking for volunteers on who, who can look at this topic for maybe next month or the month after and start sort of building out a schedule of topics that you want to cover well i've got the in the uh, meeting notes um you know there's a, an item for it why don't folks just put the name or the the idea that you have uh, and then, uh, well, it looks like some people have already started actually adding it. So if you have a suggestion for who might be the person to, to demo those uh, ideas, if you put it as a sub item of your entry there, um, just who we might contact for that, um, then that keeps everything nice and, and organized, so. All right, uh, we have uh, five more minutes left, we've covered everything um, in our agenda. Are there any last minute topics or questions or concerns that you want to bring to the table before we uh, call it? I feel bad asking for this. Um, I'm asking just because I've been out of the loop for months now. <laughs> A lot of work stuff happening on my end. Um, Last time I was in the working group, there was discussions around uh, Operator Hub and like the Red Hat registry versus the community registry and the cross-pollination there. Um, I don't really know what that status is between OKD and OCP right now. Is Has that changed at all or improved since, I don't know, I feel like this is like November at least. Christian, go ahead. Um. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, there's been a lot of development on on that uh, front. So we, we do still plan on uh, having separate OKD catalogs. And I think uh, Vadim has talked to some people internally to, to make that happen. Um, and yeah, but I haven't heard anything for at least three, three months, uh, three weeks now. So uh, probably not since the last meeting. Um, that there is uh, an update on on it. Um, yeah, I I will uh, ask him about that again, and hopefully by uh, by the next meeting we'll have uh, some more news. Definitely, it's in the making, but I don't think it has a high priority at the moment internally. We should uh, probably uh, push on that a little more from from our side. Uh, yeah, well, I think that's a good side. selling point. Is what we have, you know, in terms of operators. Now, uh, I will say that. The, the document that Christian created, the, the issue um, was reorganized a little bit with a little bit more context as to what, the, like the three different categories basically of, of hubs. And so um, you might revisit that. Christian might have the link to it. If not, I can post it. But basically there's a little more context in the, in the issue um, that Christian created that lays out all of the operators um, that folks are interested in seeing and where they're coming from what ones are internal to Red Hat, what ones need basically a community developer, what ones, you know, et cetera. So um, we can start with that. And I, my sense is that um, probably in August, we'll take a more targeted approach 
Um, and we had talked in the last working group meeting about starting to reach out to folks at particular um, companies in terms of uh, having OKD uh, tested in their environments on their platforms. I, I'm thinking we're gonna probably do the same thing with operators is just like start reaching out to folks and saying, hey, we would like this, you know, we would like to get some resources, we'd like to contribute some resources to getting this operator working on OKD and in the proper place. So to take a very targeted approach to it. That's what I'd like to do anyway, so. All right, anything else? All right, thank you very much, folks. And again, the docs meeting is um, next Tuesday, same bat time, same bat channel. Fedora Core OS meeting is tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern. Uh, and uh, just, we'll put links uh, to that for the Fedora Core OS uh, meeting if folks are interested in attending that. And I think we're good to go. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jamie. Hey, Carol. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you all.